All right, we've covered how to create tables, which can help Thomas focus on smaller sets of data for his sales data project. But it would be nice if he could show that data in a more organized and professional manner. To accomplish that, let's explore how Thomas can format tables. Let's start with the Table Design Contextual tab and briefly explore the various groups, commands, and options that they contain. Let's start with the groups. They are Properties Group, the Tools Group, the External Table Data Group, the Table Style Options Group, and the Table Styles Group. Now let's explore each one of them. Whenever you're working with a table, the Table Design Contextual tab appears on the ribbon. Using the controls on this tab, you can modify just about any aspect of your table. In the Properties group, you can view and edit the current table's name. You should always name your table so that you will know what it is. One of the benefits of naming your table is that the table name is visible from anywhere in the workbook, so you can refer to it in formulas, for example. And keep in mind that rules for naming tables are the same as the rules for naming cells. You can also redefine the table size using the Resize Table command. Within the Tools group, you can remove duplicate values from your table using the Remove Duplicates command. You can use the Summarize with Pivot Table command to create a pivot table out of the current table. You will cover pivot tables in an upcoming lesson. And you can use the Convert to Range command to convert it back to a regular range. You can also insert a slicer into the table using the Insert Slicer command. A slicer is a graphic that you can add to the worksheet to filter the table data. It's a good effect for presentation of results to others and makes it easier for the others to refine the data in the table. You can use the commands in the external table data group to export table data to other applications, as well as manage data links to external resources. Similarly, you can use the checkbox controls in the table style options group to toggle on or off available table components. Finally, you can use the gallery of styles displayed in the table styles group and apply them to the current table. Now that you have explored the table design contextual tab, let's see how Thomas can format his table to show sales data in a more professional way. Similar to cell styles, table styles are pre-configured formatting options that can be applied to tables. With table styles, you can quickly apply a splash of color to your tables and in some cases enhance their readability. While you do have the option of configuring your own table style, you can also select from a variety of pre-configured quick styles. You can find all of these quick styles within the Table Styles group of the Table Design tab. If you click the More arrow within the Table Styles gallery, it expands it to show more options. When you click any style option inside the Table Styles gallery, it gets applied to the current table. Finally, to clear an applied style, you can click the More arrow within the Table Styles gallery and then click Clear. The table is then displayed with no style at all. You've just seen how to apply styles to tables so Thomas can present them in a more professional manner. Let's now look at how Thomas can customize row display. You can customize rows in a table through the enabling or disabling of banded rows and the inclusion of total rows. If you want to toggle banded rows, first select the table that you would like to work with and then click the banded rows checkbox in the table style options group. Banded rows are enabled by default to make the data easier to read, but you can always choose to disable it. If you click the Total Row checkbox in the Table Style Options group, it inserts a total row at the bottom of the table. When the total row is shown, you will see that it appears bold, and one or more of the columns will display a total.